Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're showing you how to use FX sound, so enhance your sound with FX sound. But first guys, if you want, you can go down on this video in the comment section and click on the first comment that I pinned. This will bring you to my Fiverr and here you can get a YouTube logo and banner or a modern minimalist YouTube logo and banner for your YouTube channel. But now back to the video. Now the previous video on my channel actually shows you how to download and install FX sound, so how to get FX sound. So in case you didn't have it yet or you were running into any problems, you can actually go ahead and check that out. It will be up in the right corner here. But in any case, we are going to jump right in here. Before actually going in FX sound itself, there's one thing that's definitely important to mention beforehand. And let's make sure, first of all, if you go down to the volume down here, let's so basically, first of all, make sure that this one is all the way up. Now, if you don't want it to be that loud, you can put it down, of course, a bit, but the output volume here in Windows is also going to be very important. Even more important so, if you click on here, I'm going to select a sound output and make sure it's selected on FX sound speakers. So the FX sound audio enhancer. Very important to make sure that this one is selected while using FX sound, because if you're only going to do your speakers right here, you're not going to hear through FX sound what's happening. So actually make sure that here in Windows output, that FX sound speakers are selected. That's very important. Then if I actually once again go down here, but I right click on the volume icon and go to sound settings, as you can see, these are the outputs. And so of course, I'm going to go to FX sound speakers, which once again should be selected by now. And I go to the little arrow. There's not really that much to do here. So you can click allow or don't allow. That's up to you. Same if you want this as a default audio device. What's a bit more important though, is if you click on here, you actually have the choice between 44,100 Hertz and 48,000 Hertz. Now there's not a really big difference between the two, but I could definitely advise you in this case to just go for 48,000 Hertz. It's what mostly used in audio anyway way so click on it but there's not really much more to do so you can just close this now of course the important part fx sound itself as you can see down here we have the application you can actually right click and do pin to taskbar if you want it of course down here on the taskbar you can also go to start of course type fx sound and here as you can see we have the once again the application you can also right click on it and do it pin to start now i already have a pin to start so it says unpin from start for me but of course if you click here you can pin it to start once again pin to taskbar you can also do the open file location which of course will bring us here where you can also by the way check for updates on fx sound which could be useful and here you can right click do show more options send to and then desktop and also create a desktop shortcut if you want that so that's a nice little thing to know there also something else that is actually also quite important is that if you minimize or close fx sound it will actually be in the system tray so these little icons here as you can see it's already running obviously but what you can do here so do make sure that if for example you minimize or close this once again there's a big chance it's still playing in the background and then you have to go to this little arrow here you can also right click open it again in case of course it's closed turn on or off actually go directly to the settings or exit and if you click exit you will be exited out of fx sound so if you just click a little cross here it's not necessarily closed it might be playing in the background so if you really want to close it you can go ahead and click exit here then it won't be running anymore but so something that's definitely also worth mentioning in case you're a bit lost where the application goes if you put it in the background now here we are with the latest fx sound layout of course obviously at the moment I have zero settings if i actually click this right here and so it becomes red pinkish well that means that it's enabled so if i do this and it's grayed out it's disabled and i click again and it looks like this once again a bit of a light red pink color that means it's enabled so very important to distinguish those two to actually know that it's turned on so here's of course going to be the presets the output here's some effects and the eq up here you can go to more detailed settings and actually here we can make it smaller so it can become like a little tab down here and of course minimize and close it but once again it's probably not entirely closed until you go down to the system tray and exit and so going to the output, which is of course very important, it should actually be on the speakers in this case. Now you might have some other outputs here, but in this case it simply needs to be the speakers where you usually hear your sound in. So you might have headphones, you might have speakers on your desk, but no matter what, make sure it's the output that you usually use, your speakers. That is actually very important, because even though, once again of course, this down here in Windows, in the sound output, it should be FX sound speakers. So that is for the Windows output. It should actually be your normal regular speakers in FX sound itself, so that you actually hear the audio through there to your speakers. So important to distinguish those two and have to keep in mind when you set this up. And you should also put a fixed sound as an output in any other applications or programs. So if, for example, if I have Discord here, an output device, I just make sure it's selected to a fixed sound speakers, a fixed sound audio enhancer as well. So the same output, just like any other app I will be using. If you're going to use a fixed sound, put it to that. So now going to presets here, there will already be some integrated by default presets. So one that might be added for movies. Some is just mostly a volume boost for gaming bass boost. And these aren't that bad, but I would advise you to create your own preset, which I will show later on in the video As you can see this one is one that i made myself and of course you can adapt that to whatever you like which is what i will show you in the eq and other fx sound effects but if we made any changes here we're actually later on going to save this as a preset so that you also know how to do that because at the moment a lot of here is going to be grayed out because we haven't done anything yet in fx sounds we have nothing yet so that's why we first have to make changes save them and then we can actually do some grayed out options here for later on so i actually found a video right here that i'm going to use as an example to show you how all of the effects in fx sound actually work so i can play a bit 
you can hear some ambient music. And if I actually go to effect sounds right here, if I play the audio, you can already see some small waveforms here. But of course, we haven't done any changes yet. I'm actually going to show you these one by one here. So the clarity, first of all, makes it a bit higher and of course clearer, but don't do this too much. Because as you can hear, it will begin very thin. The sound will get very thin. So the clarity in general, you probably won't need to put it that much. Really one or two might be enough already in some cases. Don't overdo that, I would say. Ambience. Ambience actually mostly gives it a bit more of a reverb. So if I put this... As you can hear, it gives some reverb. Reverb is basically like a larger sound. You can hear no reverb. And some more, let's say, reverb. It's ambience. Once again, you don't have to put that up too much. It really depends. The same goes for surround sound. It really is what you think it would be. But this one's same. On headphones, it doesn't really sound that good, actually. You can put this up a little bit. On speakers that are actually on your desk, that you have, like, next to your computer, might actually be... It might actually sound better to have that surround sound and get more of a cinematic experience, of course. But with headsets, don't put it up too high, I would say. Now, something very important. If I, for example, put this down here, I'm going to purposely put this down quite low i can actually do a volume boost in fx sound as well so of course how to boost your volume in this case in fx sound of course so if i do this right now the volume as i said is quite low that of course is going to bring it up quite a lot so this is going to bring it down so in case you might only have to use this for a volume boost you can actually do this it goes up to 10 can get quite loud of course watch out for that but you can also just use fx sounds just for a volume boost you know or actually something else as well you can actually also do a bass boost it's going to put emphasis on the bass, on the low end of the audio. It's going to be a lot of low end. Quite thick of a sound, so you don't want to put this up too much. It really depends what you're using it for. And if you listen to it, you can clearly hear the difference. So that's in case, of course, you can also only use it in a fixed sound to bass boost anything you want to listen to. So that's actually very nice that you have those options as well. Apart from like the other options we already have here, you know. So now very important as well. I'm actually going to go over EQ here. So the EQ, this is going to be the EQ chart. Don't worry, I'm going to actually explain you the frequencies here. That you can actually change as well. If I do this, for example, I can see 44 hertz. And I can go up to 81 hertz. This one can start at 88 hertz and then go up to 162. So you can actually select a specific frequency here, which is actually very useful. And so the first one's right here. So 62, 81. I won't really advise you to use those because anything under 100 is actually quite rumbly. Now this is actually more specifically for vocals. You do anything that has like a voice in it. So if you're watching, for example, a movie or a series, I would advise you to avoid these two and start at, for example, if I use the third one here, around 100 hertz if anything as i said like voice vocals whatever singing is included i would advise you to approximately start around 100 hertz and there you can actually go up to like 120 140 50 up to like 200 i would say and from like 200 afterwards you really shouldn't go too much but i'll go over that afterwards so here of course you can boost it so this is called boosting it's when you put it up and this is called cutting when you put it down so now i'm boosting a frequency by going up and I'm cutting the frequency by going down. So here, of course, because it's the bass, we want a little bit of that. So we can actually put it at like 2. Now here, if I start around 175, 200 here, I wouldn't actually advise you to touch this right here. It's going to be like up to like 325. This is actually going to give you a lot of muddiness. If you once again have voices in here, this is actually going to give you a lot of muddiness. And it's actually going to leave you a lot of boxiness. So everything like 400, 600. Now, I don't have any voices in here. So I could put this up and work a bit with this. But I won't really be using these. I prefer to focus right here on the more of the mid-range, which starts at like let's say 800 to 1000 and here you can either go up of course but it's gonna make it a bit thinner around here so i prefer to go a little down here not too much just a little bit and then do like around 1000 hertz after the mid-range i'm gonna start getting into the highs a bit so above 2000 kilohertz it's starting to get into the highs so you can start boosting this like if you give it this a little boost and here same the 3k 4k this is really just high end more of the high end so we can put it at 4k 4k is already a pretty good frequency but you don't want to do it too much and then here, and 6K. It's also a pretty good frequency to boost. A lot of clarity in there, as you can hear. Once again, we don't want to exaggerate it. And then the last one here, so like 10K or above, it's going to give us airiness, so openness, how open it's going to sound. And so if I do like, for example, I think around 12K is good. 14, 15K might be a bit too much, once again, depending on what you're working with. But as you can see, if I do this, Makes it sound quite open, a bit too thin, of course, up here. So there you go. These are settings you could take. Now, if I, for example, disable this, you can hear the difference. I'm going to exaggerate it a bit.
quite a big difference there. So that's what IQ can do, of course. So to keep that in mind, so this is actually what I will be keeping at the moment. Sounds good to me. Of course, do this appropriate to what you're going to do. So if you're planning on watching movies or series, it's going to look different for you right here. Once again, these are going to be the lows. And generally, you don't want to touch these two. I would say start around 100 hertz. So it's going to be the lows. These two same here. It's going to start to get the mid range here. So we have the mid range. And here it gets into the highs, if you will. Above like 2K. And then of course, 4, 6K up to like 13 to 15K. So that's how you have to see it as well. Lows, mids and highs and then you just want to see what you want to control so this once again will look a bit different if you're planning on only watching series and movies with this and not only music keep in mind that the vocals are important in that case or the voices of course in the movies and series but then if I actually go to the settings, so we do it by clicking right here. Here you have a couple of options. Of course, you can do save new preset, which is something we have to still do because we still haven't saved this. You can override an existing one. Of course, you can undo, rename, delete. And something I'll show you a bit later on as well is going to be exporting and importing presets. Download bonus presets is actually going to take you right to the website where you can actually download a bunch of new general presets that will add to this list right here, as we saw earlier, if you want that. And of course, donate. Since this is actually a free open source software, it's for free. But of course, if you're thankful for their service, and for the application, of course, you can go ahead and donate if you want as well. But we are actually going to go into the actual settings here. So first in settings, we have the audio tab. You can select preferred output. Once again, just do speakers here. But as long as speakers are selected right here already, you're already good. This is just a preferred one that you will put as a default. Equalize the 10 bands. You can actually put this up to more frequencies. So adding 15 to 31 bands is actually going to give you way much more of a range. So give you way more frequencies to work with here. As you can see here, it's going to get even more specific. The disadvantage of that is actually that you won't have the wheel anymore more the wheel that as I saw earlier you can change in order to get the specific frequency these are more general frequencies right here as you can see so this isn't all that bad but I would still advise you to get a little bit less right here so that you can actually still have the band like if you do have 10 for example 10 is the default and then of course you can still go ahead and select the specific frequency which once again is pretty important so it's really that bad if you go for the other ones right here but just know that even though you have more options it technically is going to be less specific than the 10 bands one if you actually have to master gain so not to be confused of course with what's going to be like the base boost here and the volume this is going to be generally of the application itself normalization in some cases also going to be not advised because it's going to normalize the sound and that isn't always accurate so it's going to make it too loud sometimes or too quiet so normalization you can just leave it like that of course you also have panning more to the left ear or to the right ear if for some reason you want that then here in general settings of course language is preference it's whatever you want you can have some notifications if you want to hide them sometimes a notification will come down here and you can hide it and actually some keyboard shortcuts of course which you can do yourself here by clicking on it and you click the keys that you actually want it to be so make sure this is unselected by the way if you click this it's going to be disabled so you want to make sure that this is unchecked like now so that it's actually enabled and you can actually change these key binds here so the keyboard shortcuts and so to open close it maybe change presets it has just a couple of small and here you can also reset preset to factory defaults and have it like you just downloaded and installed it basically getting it back to default and you can also go to help here you can look at the logs of the latest versions and some previous older versions get to the help center if you actually have a more specific problem that you want to report or troubleshoot and of course you can also check it for updates here if you were running a more older version of fx sound and you want to be more up to date to have the extra features that i had right here for example important as well to sometimes check for updates then you can close this now we are going to save a new preset so i'm just going to call this tutorial there we go you click enter as you can see the message right here new preset tutorial saved and so it has been added of course to the list of presets here as well and so now for example if i make a change if i put this back to zero here all of this i put back to zero and i go back here and i can do then override existing preset tutorial so now overriding it once again down here the message changes to preset tutorial saved so now the new little changes i've done are saved so now actually going to show you how to export presets so if I want to export this one right here, the one called tutorial that we just did, and click on export presets. Now here you have the list, the default ones, and of course the one I want to be exported, which is going to be tutorial. Click export, and then it says presets are exported successfully. Click OK. It actually immediately opens it up to the folder. Now it should actually be in your documents. There should be a folder that has been created that's called FX Sound. Click on that, and then you'll be in FX Sound, as you can see. Then you go to presets export and here's the one it was called tutorial this is the one that we just did so then you also know the file location where it would be saved in this case a preset now then we can actually also import the preset or presets in question so if i click on it once again if you go to your documents you have should have the fx sound folder then you go to presets and export here i can then import the one in question the same principles we saw before but this way it of course would be to import one right here from the path as we saw earlier and you can also of course get it from exterior source for example a youtuber or a streamer gave you that or you got it from a forum those settings then you can of course import it there so that you immediately have all those settings ready to load
Also, lastly, I wanted to show something that's quite important. If you have actually problems with the sound, the speakers, whatever, in FX Sound, what you can do is kind of like do a troubleshoot. If you go to search here, I'm going to type device manager, as you can see here, click on it. And here, this window is pretty important. What you actually basically want to do is just go to this one right here and you click on the little arrow. And of course, I have quite some inputs and outputs here. You might have less than this. Basically, where you're going to go to is go to speakers, the ones that you use as a default output. So just my speakers in this case. You want to right click on it and you can actually update the driver. Click on that. You want to go for search automatically for drivers and if you're up to date it says that windows has determined that the best driver for this device is already installed when it says that it's actually up to date the driver is up to date because of course if the software of your speakers of your headphones is not up to date it could cause you some troubles in hearing of course all we did here in case you're having some trouble with the audio that could be one of the solutions anyway guys i tried to go over all of the options here within fx sound really showing you all of the different effects and actually of course once again you have to adapt this in case you are gonna mostly gonna watch movies with this series maybe play games with it or listen to some music mostly it really depends what you're gonna use this for but anyways hope you enjoyed this tutorial please if you like it would be really nice subscribe it's also really nice and i'll see you guys in my next video bye